Good morning. We welcome you to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. We're glad to see that you're here to worship with us this morning. And that welcome extends wherever you are in your walk of faith. Uh, no matter where that week has taken you, uh, we're glad that you're here to worship with us. And so would you please stand? And we worship this morning in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our order of worship will be found on the screens. Let's join in singing our gathering hymn. Dear friends, as we gather this morning once more, we find ourselves seeking God's promised forgiveness. And so together we confess our sins using the words on the screen. Gracious and giving Lord, you have showered us with countless blessings and held us securely in your unfailing love in Jesus Christ. We confess that we often take your gifts for granted and Dear friends, as a called and ordained minister of Christ and by God's grace in Jesus Christ, I have the honor and privilege of announcing to you the entire forgiveness of your sins. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, you are forgiven and free. Free to live, love, and rejoice in the forgiving and saving love of God. Amen. Let us pray. 
Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Carrie. Good morning. I'd ask all the children to come join me this morning. Come on up. Good morning. Sarah, will you be my helper this morning? Sh sure. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Good. Come on over, Sarah. You're going to hold my plate. Come on in. You're going you're gonna to want to see this. Come on over here, Sarah. Good morning. Come on up. Bring a friend. Bring mom, dad, grandma. All right, friends. What do I have here this morning? Toothpaste, raise your hand if you brushed your teeth this morning. You didn't? Uh, yeah. Um, I can't use my sister. Okay, good. But All right. Goes, it's sour, but I can use my sister. Yeah, that kid's sister. toothpaste sometimes is not the greatest, does it? Yeah. Tastes a little funny. All right, friends, I have a tube of toothpaste here this morning. My friend Sarah is going to be my helper. Friends, what is a sin? Um, being mean. Being mean. Can you tell me of a way that that somebody could sin or be mean? Um, by, hitting by hitting someone. Some friends, when we hear a sin, we're going to go, <laughs> sin, okay? All right, who's got another one? Um, biting. By biting somebody. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> sin. Oh, wait, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. What's another one? What's another way that we can sin and be bad? What, what would happen? A car? Yeah? What else? What could we do, Lean? What do you think? What's another the way? Listen. We're not listening. Ready? Oh, we all do that one. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> sin. All right. Who's got another one? Who's got another one? What's another way we can sin? Um, if you be mean. Being mean to somebody. Yeah, right. Hurting our friend's feelings, maybe. Ready? Here we go. Sin. <laughs> We're not looking so good, are we here? What's another way? One more. Give me one more way that we can sin. What do you think? Come on, for my older kids. I know you know. Molly, the birthday girl. What do you think? What's another way we can sin? Maybe not listening to your parents. Maybe not cleaning up your room when you were supposed to, right? Here we go. Ready? Sin. Friends, we're not looking very good today, are we? No. Who made us sin? We did that, didn't we? We made that sin. So I'm going to clean it up because I sinned and I don't look very good. So I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to clean it up. Friends, it's not going back. It's not cleaning. Oh, no. Friends, can I put that sin can I erase that sin? Can I get rid of it? No. Oh, I can't, can I? I can't do it by myself. Who do I need? God. God. I need Andy. God. Aunt Charlotte. Nice. Jesus. God, right? God is the only one who can clean that up. God is the only one who can take away our sins, who can make us feel better. Because we always sin, don't we? We daily sin. Got all that goop. God, it, uh, getting I know. Even when I try to clean it up, it gets worse, doesn't it? It's getting all over the place, right? So I can't clean it. Only Jesus can. Jesus can come. Thank you, Sarah. Jesus is the only one who can come Amen. into your heart. That's right. Who can come into your heart and clean it up. So, friends, will you pray with me? Sarah, did you want to hold hands with me? No. No? Oh, okay. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for coming into my heart and cleansing it from sin because we know that only through you can we be saved. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, my friends. <laughs> what am I going to do now, right?
a reading from Numbers. Now the rabble that was among them had a strong craving. And the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their clans, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord blazed hotly, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you dealt ill with your servant? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give them birth, that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom, as a nurse carries a nursing child, to the land that you swore to give their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they weep before me and say, Give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you will treat me like this, kill me at once. If I find favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of meeting, and let them take their stand there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered seventy men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Midad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone, gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Midad are pr prophesying in the camp, and, the, and Joshua the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. Oh, <laughs> 
A reading from James. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I read a story this week about an Episcopal priest named David Galloway. And Father David I uh, loved to golf, and he had just finished a round of golf with three of his closest friends in Tyler, Texas. Now, 
A little side note about Tyler, Texas. I've actually been to Tyler, Texas. Not to the golf course, but I've been to Tyler, Texas. And uh, after sharing Father Galloway's story last night, one of our members came up to me following 5 o'clock service and says, You know, Pastor, I was born in Tyler, Texas. Small world. And did you know it's the rose capital of the United States? So just so you know, that's what Tyler, Texas is. But that has nothing to do uh, with the sermon today. But Father David had uh, finished golfing, and so he and his foursome, they stopped uh, in the club grill for lunch. And as was the custom, as refreshments were being served, the room was full of folks bragging about their great round of golf. Okay? They were bragging about their great round of golf, the spectacular drives they had all made that day, and the long putts for birdie that they had sunk preferably with people who weren't in their foursome. Because, in other words, they were embellishing their round and flat out lying about how good they were. But as all this was going on, and they were bragging about their accomplishments and having a post-round uh, refreshment, a gentleman named Hugh entered the room. And Hugh uh, was a Texas oil man. And Father Galloway relays the story. He said he was a Texas oil man straight out of central casting. Okay? He was red-faced from the sun. He was loud. He was boisterous. He was a black-slapping, hee-hawing fellow that Everyone in town and everyone at the golf course tried to avoid because he was overbearing and he was just obnoxious. Picture him yet? Know anyone like that? Any of your friends know anyone like that? You might be the one if they've all been avoiding you lately. Anyways, Hugh strutted into the grill with a drink in one hand and a cigar in the other, and he went right up to Father David. And he began thundering at him. And Hugh was loud enough he could make the whole room be quiet and pay attention to what he was saying. And he bellowed at Father David and he started the conversation with this. You Episcopalians don't believe in the Bible, do you? Well, rather than take the bait, Father David just looked at him and he smiled weakly, hoping that would end the confrontation, but Hugh was having none of that. Hugh was actually referring to a recent decision by the Episcopal Church on some topic that was not to his own liking. He went on, David, right in his face. Everyone in the room is listening. David, I want to go to a church that is Bible-believing. Do you understand a place where the preacher is not trying to tiptoe around the hard lessons of Jesus. A preacher who will lay it on the line and not try to water down the gospel. I want the full gospel. I don't want a preacher to pussyfoot around the message of Jesus. The whole place was quiet. Just like you are. And Father David took a long sip from his glass and he looked at Hugh and he said this. You want the full gospel, Hugh? You mean the part about selling all that you have and giving it to the poor? Silence fell over the room. And then Hugh responded, well, not that part. The room broke up in laughter, and Hugh slunk out of the room. And wouldn't you know it, everyone rushed over to David. They were high five in this Episcopal priest. Way to go, David. You shut him up. Oh, that was just great. That was grand. We loved it. Hugh had finally been put in his place. And so Father David went home that evening. He was feeling pretty good about himself and it had nothing to do with his round of golf. 
And he went home. He relayed this story to his wife. She laughed at it. He was feeling so good, waiting for her to give him a high five or a hug or a kiss. And after she laughed a little bit, she added this statement. She looked at him. She said, so David, what part of the gospel do you avoid? Ouch. 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 That's the thing about sin. Friends, it's always there. It's always there in our hands. It's always there in our eyes. It's always there in our feet. It's always there in my heart. And it's always there in your heart. Jesus, when he was talking about sin in our gospel reading in Mark 9 today, I don't think this is a real easy text. And I wrestled with it all week long. What he was talking about, folks, was the seriousness of sin. But the truth of the matter is, sin doesn't begin in your hands. Sin doesn't begin in your feet. Sin doesn't begin in your eyes. Those are just symptoms. In another place, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, Jesus said this about the origin of sin in hearts. But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. That's what that discussion was about. And I think we could take that to Mark 9 and say what comes from your hands and your mouth and your eyes and your feet proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. When Jesus says, cut it off, if it's causing you to sin, he's not saying that literally, but he wants you to know today how serious sin is. And it's serious because sin takes people away from their Savior. But if sin originates in the heart, notice he did not say in Mark chapter 9, cut your heart out. He did not say, remove your heart. And that's what's needed. A new heart. And he did that when he died for us on the cross. He gave us a new heart. A heart that was changed. A heart that clings to Jesus. A heart that clings to the God who not only is that heart's creator, but is that God's, that heart's savior. Folks, These are powerful words. And he talks very powerfully. And it's true. If what your hand does causes you to doubt the Savior's love for you, stop doing it. Because it will ruin you. And if your feet lead you to places that cause you to doubt your relationship with Christ, stop going there. Because it will kill you. What Jesus wants you to know today is he's the only hope you have. There's no one else. He's the only hope you have for eternity. But he is the hope you have 
for eternity. And this Jesus is the one who has given you a new heart. He's changed you, and he has promised to preserve you. His reference to salt in our gospel reading today, his reference to salt, for everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Folks, in the ancient world, salt wasn't about flavor as it is for us. Saul was about preservation. Saul was about preserving food. The salt that preserves us is Jesus in his death and resurrection. The salt that preserves us is what Christ has done for us, not what we do for Christ. The salt that preserves us is Jesus. And then he gives us an amazing, amazing reason to live. He said, you're the salt of the earth. You're the preserver of this world because you're the ones who bear my salt into it. Folks, that's the point of the text. Our Jesus will preserve you. He will preserve you through all that comes, through all the crud and through all the muck and through all the mire that this world throws at you and even through all the dumb stuff you do to yourself. And what your sinful nature does to others. Did you catch that other warning? If you cause one of these little ones to sin. And we can't help that either. Without Christ. Because he has changed us. And then the parts of our body, our hands, our feet, our eyes, our mouths can be used for his glory. The Apostle Paul wrote about it like this. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest, after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Folks, that's the other thing about having a new heart. It's the worldly way turned upside down. Let me explain what I mean by that. We have been taught and trained our whole life that what we do today influences tomorrow. Right? The child goes off to school. What's that child told? Oh, you have to study real hard. You have to study real hard and learn lots of stuff because if you don't study real hard and you don't learn lots of stuff, you won't graduate. And if you don't graduate, you won't get a good job. So what you're learning now and doing today will influence the future. And then as we get older, the same lesson is taught to us. Well, isn't it? Well, save. Save for retirement. What you do today influences tomorrow. Save for retirement so that when your working days are done, you'll have enough to live on. What you do today influences tomorrow. With me? The gospel changes all that around. Because tomorrow influences today. Do you know what tomorrow will bring for those whose hearts are new in Christ? It will bring 
it will bring eternity. It will bring a new heaven and a new earth. It will bring more than you've ever dreamed or imagined. Folks, that's what influences today. That's what influences today. Take a look around the gathering space. Our Lutheran Women's Missionary League ladies, they want to share that with you because of the hope that they have and the new hearts they've been given, they let tomorrow influence today. And it sends them out into the world. It sends them out to do God's bidding. And that's true for us all. Tomorrow influences today, not the other way around. You can't influence eternity. You can't. Either it's all done by God or it's not done. You just can't. Because, friends, our witness to the world is not how much we love God. That will always be imperfect. That will always fall short. That will always include sin. Our witness to the world is how much God loves us. And he loves us in Christ. And he loves us enough to give us a new heart. And he loves us enough to preserve us as our salt. He loves us enough so that we, as Paul said, can discipline ourselves to influence the present. And instead of causing others to sin, inviting them to rejoice because the same Christ is there for them. The gospel is not about our response to God. It's not. The gospel in its purest form is God's love for us. First, last, and always. Let's rejoice in it. Together, today, and always. May God grant that to us all. Amen? Amen. Pastor? Would you please stand? Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please remain standing for prayer. Freed by God in Christ to live and love and serve, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's beloved creation. Gracious God, you gather together people of faith in every time and every place to be the risen body of Christ in the world. Enliven the church to nourish its members and to serve its neighbors here and at Peace Lutheran Church in Alchester, South Dakota, and King of Kings Lutheran Church in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Lord, in your mercy. Sovereign God, you bless people with intelligence and compassion. Inspire citizens to raise up good leaders who seek peace and reconciliation among nations and who long to repair the world. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, 
You house the homeless, free the captive, and heal the sick. Make our hands your hands in service to strangers and friends. We pray especially for those we name before you, silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Welcoming God, you have given us to each other in this congregation. Make us glad to receive those you send to us and ready to receive their unique gifts and perspectives that many may come to know Christ, that beautiful Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, you receive us in joy and holy baptism in Christ. Bless the newly baptized Veda Kate Gust and strengthen her with the Holy Spirit in her baptismal covenant. Lord, in your mercy. All wise God, you raise up leaders to faithfully serve the church. Grant synodical president Matthew Harrison and district president Lucas Woodford diligence in ministry and joy in their service. Lord, in your mercy. God of our salvation, we give you thanks for the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, Lutheran Women in Mission, and for those who use their gifts of leadership. National President Patty Ross, Minnesota South District President Deb Vinkemeyer, and Northwest Suburban Zone President Madeline Krinke. Bless the work and mission supported by the mites given by so many. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate God, in Christ you demonstrated mercy and care for everyone. As your children, you call us to a life of service and you equip us to serve our neighbor. Lead us to live out our calling by reaching out to others, including through our mission partners. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you love us unconditionally. Increase our trust in you through Christ and keep us from sinning and leading others astray. Lord, in your mercy. In every time and place, you raise up witnesses who testify to your love and tender mercy. We remember with thanksgiving all who made your word known in the world and ask that you comfort all who grieve, especially Kathy Groen, Kelly Rail, Brett Schoberg, and all their families. Lord, in your mercy. Into your wide embrace, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And our worship continues with the offering. Please rise for prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Friends, this is Jesus. Uh, he's come to you here in this meal, his body and blood, in with and under the bread and wine, given and shed to give you his gifts and to preserve you in this life, wherever you are, wherever you come from. So come and receive this meal and receive these gifts that Christ has for you. The table is set. Please be seated.
Would you please stand? And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in true faith into life everlasting. Depart in his joy and in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Wise and generous God, we thank you that at this holy table you have fed us again with the food of everlasting life. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and call others to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. If I could just have you please be seated for just one minute here. I just got one announcement, and that is this weekend at Beautiful Savior, we are celebrating LWML Weekend, which is Lutheran Women's Missionary League. Pastor Tom talked about it briefly in his message today, a great and powerful message, by the way. Thank you very much, Pastor, for those words. Uh, but basically what that is, is an organization of our denomination, and we have women here in our congregation who work with them, and the great work that they're doing, not just in the United States, but across the the globe. And so with that, we invite you to go into the gathering space. You may have noticed some changes there and get to know that organization better. But you know, our women here with the LWML wanted to lift up some other missions at Beautiful Savior, some homegrown missions. And so you'll see those out there too. And we invite you to get to know those as well. And no, it's not just for women. Okay, guys, so this is not an excuse, all right? You get an opportunity to get to know some of the missions we have going on here at Beautiful Savior along with the LWML. So we invite you to do that in the gathering space after worship today. Get to know them. Uh, see if even there's a way to engage with them if you're looking for something to do, if you're looking for a way to connect. And on top of it all, there's Apple turnovers at the end of the building here, okay? Just out in the gathering space. You can't go wrong with Apple turnovers, can you? Wow, you guys are not excited about this at all. <laughs> Apple turnovers. I don't know if I could say that enough. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, apple turnovers and some cookies and some juice as well. So we invite you to check that out in the gathering space after our worship today. Would you please stand and receive the blessing of our Lord, knowing that he goes with you in this week and preserves you, as Pastor Tom mentioned today in our text. So receive that blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace.